So welcome everyone. Uh, today I'll be taking a look at this piece, which is interesting because it's kind of like a kind of a character concept, gray backgrounds. We haven't done one of these in a while. Um, before I do, there are some announcements. Uh, Portrait Studio is still on sale. Uh, it will be on sale until after Christmas. So if anyone's interested in buying it or buying it for a loved one, it'll be on sale at 50% off. It might hit 55% off after the 20th. So if you want a you know a lot off a discount, an extra five percent, uh, keep an eye out for the twentieth. Um, I might do that sale a little bit earlier than the twentieth, um, but um, keep an eye out for that. And then there is the announcement, which is today is the second last day of critique hour for twenty twenty. Um, next class, which is Thursday the seventeenth at five p.m. Eastern, will be the last day of critique hour for this year. After that, I'll take a one two. Uh, two break, two two week break. I thought, why did I? Why did I think I was taking a month off? I don't know. I might, I might make it happen because I, I just need to recoup. I need, I need a mental break because I'm really burned out. I've been working my ass off nonstop because before the holidays, I, I I have like a whole curriculum to go through with every single student based off their improvement every year. So it's been jam packed. Um, each class is like full length and back to back and I've just been really, really, really tired. So I, I, will miss you guys too much to take a month off, but, um, at least two weeks is what I need. Um, so that's from everything. Uh, that's from private tutoring, critique hour, consultations, anything like that. Um, it will be a nice break for me, for my brain to just reset. And then I'll just come back stronger on the 5th, which will be the next day. After the 17th of the new year, uh, 15th, the 5th of the new year, I'm just throwing numbers at you. Um, after the 17th, the 5th of January, 2021, will be the first day we meet. <laughs> I just see a bunch of comments about, about numbers and shit. Um, and that day, I'll announce the new challenge for the, for the year. So this month, this holiday challenge is due on the 17th, uh, the Crystalline Creatures. I can't wait to see what you guys worked on. I don't even know if anybody worked on them. I know two or three people have done them. I'll look at anything that has been touched on um, on the 17th. And um, no, I am never going to be a math teacher. Can you believe I used to tutor math? Um, I mean, I was good at math, but I, I just forgot it all really, really quickly. Um... And then uh, I might take a look at this piece, uh, which is interesting because it's kind of wintry. So I want to take a look at it and see uh, what I can do with it, um, which will be really fun because I'm just trying to see what I what my mind is seeing here. Uh, all right, so let's get started. So before I am going to look at this, I already built the model on Portrait Studio. And the reason I did that is to show you exactly what I mean when I say um, uh, primary model, model of how you join. Okay, so when I say the silhouette matters, um, let me see if I could pull off a better, let me change the background value, background color all the way to black so that I can easily lasso it for you guys. Okay, so let's talk about silhouettes and character design. I also have my reference here, which should be okay. All right, so I'll just close Portrait Studio. <clears throat> so that was Portrait Studio. You have access to all kinds of models, male posable, female posable mannequins, portraits, uh, busts, you know, little items, props, uh, environment uh, assets. You got all kinds of shit to pose to create the scene that you need. Um, uh, it was developed by my friends and I, well, Abu and I. And um, it is the reference generation software of our time, and it is 50% off. Um, so if you want it, uh, it will go back up in price uh, around January, the second week of January. Um, so uh, take advantage of the sale if you can. Okay, so this piece, let's take a quick look at the silhouette. When it comes to character designs like these, even if you're drawing a skinny little dude um, like him, you should not be using such basic shapes. So what we're gonna do is select inverse. That way it actually looks good. It's weird. And okay. So just from looking at this, it really there's really not much interesting happening when it comes to the figure, right? So let's 
way to the best way to figure that out is to just figure that out. See what I did there? Alright. Was to get rid of any extra props. Because the props, you should in your mind already say the props shouldn't be what I depend on. Right, he has no hand either. Alright. So apart from this, there's really not much interesting happening to the body. There is an asymmetry happening in the shoulders, even though he is decaying. And it's really just, you know, if you rotate it, it should pretty much look interesting still. There should be more elements that at any angle it should look great. So this kind of x-ray, um, and I need someone to explain why I'm calling this an x-ray. Why am I calling this an x-ray? This kind of x-ray of, of the figure is revealing that you're depending way too much on the units of decoration, on these little um, uh, pieces of add-on cosmetics, these costumes, these little items that you're adding on that actually don't uh, uh, help or assist the main core uh, trunk of the design, which is the figure the ghoulish character, his gesture, and his characterization. So in his character, there should be some kind of interesting, really, really messed, you know, um, distorted sense of ghoulish, skeletal indication that is, 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 is encapsulates his um, decaying body but also his nature which might be a trickster which might be a brute which might be you know if they're not representing a lot of this and then he gave him a big tutu skirt which isn't helping either um he doesn't look dangerous apart from the big sword so you're gonna say yeah 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 he does look dangerous because well the sword isn't this should not be why he looks dangerous should not be the only reason he looks dangerous once you put it through an x-ray, you don't, it's just like you don't see flesh in an x-ray, you only see bone um, or other, like, you know, hard objects. You should not be seeing, when you x-ray your character, you should not see items or additional stuff. You should, you should see only the body. Um, and when the body is telling the truth, when the body is telling the story, then your character design is great. So let's say you're drawing a hefty old, you know, strong uh, female uh, a motherly figure you know and she's like the baker but she also wields the hammer kind of thing you should be able to see that in um so she's got her ponytails and then she's got her uh you know generic uh horned viking not viking kind of battle axe with the i mean with the thing with the thing all right so what i'm what i'm saying is that these character traits should be visible before we put the Put, the, put these items on. The body itself should tell the, the story of the trope. So what does it mean when we x-ray an x-ray? Because it strips away all decor and crutches. It forces you to examine the gesture of the character or how strong he actually reads. Good. X-ray because you're stripping out of detail to see the core. Good. So when we're looking at him and we see how much you're depending on detail, I really am not convinced of him feeling, you know, strong, feeling interesting. So I'm going to... I'm not getting a read, basically, is what I'm saying. So I'm going to use my reference that I built to try to make him read as like a really, really cool Dementor slash, um, you know, hack and slash character dude. So I'm just going to have this open on the side. This is what I'm opening here on the side. Or maybe, you know what, I'll just drag and drop it. That way I can pull out the silhouette. <clears throat> so yeah, so yeah, I did this. I forgot to do that. I did this to show you guys what I mean when it comes to the figure here. So the reason why I thinned out his legs and brought them close together is because I'm going to try to give him like some kind of skirt or robe. But if we bring this guy over here, we take your guy over to the left a little bit um, and just blacken this guy out so we can see a little bit of, of the trope the warrior trope we have uh, that the shoulder that you're missing it's visible again we get rid of the sword and we can see his head is beneath his shoulder line 
which makes him look a little bit like he's on, on the offense. Your shoulder is above the shoulder line. We would see his neck. Him, we're not seeing his neck. I deliberately posed him like that just because. Now we have a reference for the hand, which you did not have. He kind of just made it latch on. Um, and that's definitely something we can, you know, we can use. So now we have a reference point, and then you can adjust. This is exactly what you can do to your references. You can adjust your reference to help you. So you can just try to render stuff before you render it, right? So now we have this really cool tail of, of, of shadowy skirting, and you can just have it multiple layers, but you still have that main stem. Okay, so it looks less like a billowing skirt, and you can also just make some of it kind of tattered in different directions. You can mess with the hand so that we're seeing like parts of that, but we still have a, a core uh, size to the, to, the, to the features here. And if he does have a skeletal hand, just look up a good reference, and then here's where you can start kind of showing the decaying flesh or flesh peeling off the bones. Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's definitely that time of year. It's that time of year again where we talk about decaying flesh and Santa Claus. Alright, shut up. Um, so I'm just uh, thinning out his arm. I really wouldn't make his, his main sword arm the, the skeletal arm, but it's your choice. Okay, and then for scale and exaggeration, I'd probably... Uh, oops. Shrink the head just to make him feel a little bit more ghoulish, right? Um, so now we have this really, really nice reference. So I'm just going to copy paste this, go back to before. I mean, I don't really need the before. Actually, I might for... No, no, I don't need it. Um, so now we have our reference right here that we've adjusted. And we can start applying these corrections to this piece. They sucked. I am so tired of lasso. Like, that's why I need a vacation. I just need a vacation from lasso tool. Like, that's what I need a vacation from. Just lasso tool alone. Like, if I could get a vacation from lasso tool, I'd, I'd be a happy camper. I just I just want two weeks away from lasso tool. Um, okay, so let's turn off this. And let's jump into liquify, comrade. I'm sorry. I just keep seeing the word comrade everywhere. <laughs> it's kind of triggering me. It's my trigger word for the Russian accent. All right. Filter. Okay. Oh, is that Angry Boy again from last time? All right. So we're going to raise the shoulders up. And then I'm just going to try to, like, imagine you were animating him in a game, you know, and you had the music and you had the idle stance and he'd kind of be crouched forward. So he'd be like... And then he'd be just crouching forward, kind of just swaying back and forth. Uh, crap, there's something in my eye because I touched all that dusty shit. Um, and then I would actually make him like sway so much forward that his kind of, he's just got these. And you can, you can even, you know, adjust this as you go. So just something like that. So he's kind of just doing that in the game. Um, and so that's that's fine too. And then I would just make like these long hairs, like, you know, because he's leaning forward, kind of sag forward. And I'm trying to make this design a little bit more symmetrical. So I'm just finding the symmetry line of the body and following it. Alright. I might have to adjust the head outside of liquify. And I really don't know what the hell's going on with the with the, with the head. There's just so little that you're doing with it. Um it's really hard to tell. Okay. Um like that for a minute and then just lowering it beneath a little bit more and forward you're depending way too much on your tiny little details 
And the x-ray can go deeper. The x-ray can get rid of everything and just uh, x-ray your painting just like that. It should read well in the thumbnail. Write that back to me. It should read well in the thumbnail. It should be interesting in the thumbnail. Write all of that back. And so you do have a little ghoul face. It's kind of like a cute little skeleton of Yoda, baby Yoda here. And you really need to just enlarge that because that's... It's not working for you to have it so tiny and you're expecting us to be able to see that from a distance. It's not going to happen. Paint from a distance so that you can see how the viewer is seeing your painting. Don't zoom in at a million percent and then, you know, paint it like that. Because nobody's going to zoom into your painting like nobody cares about your painting that much to zoom into it. Give us what we need from a distance so that we can press like and you can get your paid. That's that's the rule. <laughs> so I gave this guy some some nice cheekbones some skeletal cheekbones and I'm trying to just make him look a little bit more sunken in but also just with a little bit of flesh left um, and then with liquify I usually just jump in and try to manipulate in some kind of expression I'm just trying to hand paint some of this just to make it more detailed and um, and then finally I'll do some color corrections. So you, you could go multiple directions with this. Um, it's really going to be very, very fun uh, deciding where to go with this one because there's many ways for you to mess around with a medieval kind of uh, a ghoul character. So there's really, really fun stuff. Coming. So, um, I might duplicate the layer and then paste it and then get that ghoulish green that we all love, that, that monster green, and um, just use it on a layer and then try to mess around with layer modes and just see what comes through. This is really cool. Instantly, like this one looks good. So that way I could pull from this uh, and then just make some stuff glow outward. It just depends on your personal character. If this is like a D&D &D character and it's like personal to you, you can't adjust the, the features too much. That's why I tried to stay close to your features as much as possible. Um, oh, that's cool. That's exclusion. Uh, but you know, if you, if you can, if you can add that green glow, it's really an amazing glow, you know, an amazing addition because it'll just make your character look great. Obviously you've seen this in the Lord of the Rings, maybe because I'm a Lord of the Rings fan. That's why I'm doing it. Um, pretty much just Lord of the Rings at the moment. Um, but th that's definitely an option. Okay. And then I'll just go back to just whatever it is you were doing. Probably should just go back right this way. Okay. Might have Kyle edit this video for me because I do not feel like going back and editing my rant out. Okay. Um, so now we're done that. I'm going to bring back the sword, which should be a little bit darker. It's kind of glowing, almost feels like a a divine sword you know when you when you're dealing with a character who's ugly who's nasty who's a ghoul 
I want to give them a, a sword that's a little less glamorous, a little less white, a little less divine. Because let's say you were right beside him going to draw a divine character, his exact enemy, his arc enemy in the game. Um, then what's going to happen is you're going to um, use the same feature or the same white to represent his divine sword versus, um, you know, the ghoul's white, right? So that means that you're using the, the term synonymously which is not right because one is white and and divine the sword so the language of white can't be used across the board willy-nilly you're using a very tattered ugly dirty looking sword for you know a, a creature of darkness a necromancer the product of black magic you know however games whatever it is that games do and then I'm going to just run a little bit of light just at the top, but I'm going to still try to make it gross. So I'm going to grab this greenish color and color that down so that it gets, you know, matches it a little bit. And then you, I, I suggest you just put that hand in there as well. And then just to finish off, I'm going to start smudging with a stronger scatter smudge um, just so I can get some results. That are a little bit more textured. <sighs> okay, so I'm just trying to show a little bit of extra form here and i'm not really sure what to do with the body uh, with the mouth and the expression you could have the mouth open you could have the jaw asymmetrical sitting here on the side kind of just like hanging off it's really up to you but <clears throat> Things feel a little bit more symmetrical now. Uh, feel a little bit, even though his hand is a, a stick, it makes a lot of sense um, because it's coming out of the joint. It's not completely distorted his shoulder. Um, and then because there's so much metallic on him, you might want to go back and just spot highlight some of these areas. Kind of make it look like he's got sticky, half decayed skin. I forgot to show off the necessary nostrils here and then I'll jump on to the next critique because I got some time all right so here it is so oh before I do that I don't like what I did to the jaw I, I again it's up to you you could easily just hide the lower part of the jaw <clears throat> Oops, forgot to add the highlights on this side. Okay, and then we're going to flatten the image. Okay, so with our reference, we built this scene. So before, after, so I'm going to try to make it sync with where you placed yours okay so the before you what you had before I mean you could keep all of whatever it is you were you know you've written for the character whatever you could just keep that all in place but in the before it looked a little bit like half his body was gone because you did the shoulder wrong um, and the torso didn't really make sense I think you were trying to show off the ribs it wasn't really working. Um, for this one, you could just easily um, start cutting at the design. Oops, no longer have my layer, and just show where these, where the ribs are. Oops, oh, I keep using eraser. I know, just something like that, and um, you can do the other side. And then we can just see the 
the spine through that. We can see some form coming, showing through. And then his upper, you know, whatever that, what's that chest, what's that armor, the shoulder armor? What's that big piece that they just slide their head through? Abu should know. <laughs> I know the ribs kind of seem like they're growing outside of where they usually go, but it's a ghoul. I'm sure he's been gone through all kinds of perversions. Okay. And then there's like no more. And then you just have the spine, which is kind of cool. I like that one too. So I'm just trying to stay true to the artist's vision. Well, as if I was working for them, give them different options for what they could be doing with their character. Okay. So we have these really, really cool options here. And again, that glowing quality is just, is just it's so much fun to play with, with ghoulish characters. Like you can apply that um, glow to the eyes. Oops, not on color. Um, you can apply that green glow to the, the, the jewelry. the sword the magic on the sword now, I'm not trying to make you draw every other character we've seen in a Dark Souls game but um, just to give you an idea of what the standards are at least for the gesture of the body just so he seems like because he's decaying so I don't think he'd stand up straight as if someone with all their lig ligaments you know all the someone intact would um, would stand so just to make him look a little, he still looks strong. It still looks like he was once a great, you know, king or a great warrior, but, um, but not this flimsy kind of almost teenage body we're looking at when we look at this. Kind of looks like a Final Fantasy kind of stance right here. He looks like he could kick your ass. And then let me show you just how important it is to, to think about scale. You could just like increase, I mean, it's just, kind of feels like we're increasing the whole image but just to like increase the body and just mess around with the angles I mean I wouldn't I would not make it straight because that just looks more boring um, but to mess around with scale a little bit is really cool and I think we kind of lost in the in the painting the silhouette that I made that little mermaid tail Mermaid of Death. Okay. So, um, so, shoulder pauldrons. There you go. Used to watch you a lot, now a little less because of Yanny, but thanks for everything nonetheless. Hope you have a nice day, evening. Thank you. So, anyway, let's move on to the next one. So, flatten. So, for this one, um, my main concern is that it's just, it kind of feels like you only have foreground or background. There's no midground, and what you can do is just throw her into the background a little bit, into the midground, because she is kind of flirtatiously hiding behind a tree. And so if you have something in the foreground, it makes it seem like someone is looking at her. So what we're going to do is just shrink her a little bit. And I'm going to try to make quick work of this. I'll make quick work of this. <laughs> Can anyone guess who that is? Mr. Brack, art and impressions. I mean, I would really zoom her out, but let's just talk about atmosphere and just a little bit of, you know, a little bit of depth talk because I, I don't think I'll be able to repaint the entire thing. You know, I really hate children. Where is that from? <laughs> Professor Umbridge, yes. <laughs> All right, so I don't know what she's doing with her hand, and I'm just going to get rid of it because she seems like she's um, just going nowhere with that. And I'm going to grab her entire self. 
just gonna try to mess around with it so that I don't have to, what am I doing? Um, so I don't have to mess around with the hand too much. And I'm going to erase. I actually love children. I, 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 I love kids. <laughs> That's not true. But Professor Umbridge is not, is not a good teacher. Okay, so I hid her some more behind the tree. And I might honestly hide her even more. But before I do that, I'm gonna just grab her face and tilt it towards the tree because it feels like she's trying to hide her face first. You know, and then she'll hide the rest. Okay, so that should complete because you're, you're trying to complete each thing um, as you, you know, each quality of the painting. Oh, there's a hiding character. Have it a complete feeling. Um, so have the feeling complete. Write that back to me. Meaning that, um, that if it's not, if it doesn't feel like a complete representation of a flirtatious, uh, you're just going to be having a gray area of that, which does not look good. Um, because then it's like, oh, she's just by the tree. She's not really interacting with it that much. She's supposed to be flirtatiously hiding or just shyly hiding, maybe not even flirtatiously. And she's not even hiding yet. And it's just not enough for it to feel like she's hiding. She's about to hide. So if this was an animation and you were making a poster out of the animations, which frame would you choose as the, as the poster child kind of of, of that, of that uh, feeling? So complete the feeling, choose the best frame where she's just almost hidden. Which shot would you take? Which, if you had a camera and you just saw her, you know, you're asking her to pose, which, which shot would you take? Which shot would you print? Um, and you would print the one where she's kind of almost hidden, there's a sense of mystery, the storytelling is strong. And so that alone goes a long way. If just like one eye is visible, all right, so just, just one small change, but it should help a lot in completing the feeling. So before, it's like she's not there yet, really, and then after, she's kind of in the background. As for what the heck it is you're doing with the background, I have no clue. Um, I'm just going to do my go-to critique when it comes to environments that are this bright, um, which is just try to complete the silhouette of an object in the foreground. So because I don't have time to remake the entire environment, I'm going to, I'm not trying to darken it like to be dark or foreboding, but just enough that it feels like, you know, all these characters are in the foreground that you're proposing and that the background is bright and it's snowy and if you've ever looked outside during a snowy day it's actually really white sky um, which is really cool so we could take advantage of that and we could actually afford a pretty bright light environment that uh, allows all this color to come through allows all this saturation to come through <clears throat> so that is pretty much done and then I'm going to brighten that background up a little bit so now we have this really really crispy background value and you want to keep it blue I mean I don't recommend you keep it blue just because you have all that purple and you want the feeling like the background is is pretty white and there's just like a lot of snow and another thing you could do is take that snow color and just apply it to the painting in different degrees so just to, just to show that that snow is pretty strong um, probably shouldn't have done it like that because now I have the opacity to groom but just more snow kind of in the corner same way we use black to, to create the feeling of a framed piece that's an interior piece we use we use white in a snowy or storm filled scene to make it feel like the atmosphere is actually full of that snow so you can see the difference. 
Um, but if I was you, I'd try different thumbnails. Like if you were my student in private tutoring, I'd have forced you to paint 30 thumbnails before you chose one for this scene. I'd actually ask you, force you to remake the entire painting, which is fun because you still get to keep your story. And so um, if, if you did have a character who was looking at her, I would create a little mountain. I'd put the little tree, not a mountain, a hill. I'd have her there kind of hiding shyly away. Um, I mean, the horse, I don't even know what the hell I'm sketching. And I'd have the character looking forward at her at the top. So now we have this really, and we're in the third person. If it has to be uh, first person, um, I'd make you do some thumbnails where um, it would actually be a pretty close up scene. The, and it would probably be a little bit like top view. So maybe the character's taller than her and she'd be there hiding away behind the tree. Um, so it's a bit close up, uh, maybe some leaves in the way and it would still be a very snowy scene. So you're not storytelling, right? You, I just gave you two thumbnails but that had a lot to do with storytelling and angle. So we can dress this scene up as much as we want. We could fix the, complete the feeling of the, of the, of the hiding behind the tree, but it's never going to fix the biggest problem, which is the lack of storytelling. I know you think you're telling a story by having a character and a tree and a picture, but a kindergartner can put a character and a tree in a picture. Um, they're not necessarily staging and telling a cinematic experience. That's what I mean when you have to do a, when you have to tell a story. Um, is you, you, you have to create a cinematic experience with the viewer, meaning that you have to think like the cameraman would in a movie. Um, what would their what would their choices be? How would they be directed? Um, and, and then we go back to the same silhouette issue that you guys had with the other painting today, which is she's literally just, that's her silhouette. And then that's really bad character design because, I mean, unless the character looks like <laughs> it's just some kind of cute little monster, right? Um, or like, it looks like a Shiba now. Um, but uh, if it's supposed to be a girl, you know, that's not a very nice design for, for a character that's supposed to be a love interest. She's obviously a love interest. So you've made the hair so gigantic You've lost the silhouette, which is bad, bad news. Um, whenever you're drawing a character that's a female, you don't want to lose the silhouette. And you don't have a neckline, so you lost the neckline. Um, I, why not just, you know, have her hair thrown to the side so that you get some, you know, some silhouette here. Okay. And then what you could do is just give her some of that poised kind of Broadway ballet kind. Not that Broadway and ballet are the same thing, but. Um, you know, just that ballet stance, kind of like a swan pose, you know, with the neck, that initial S curve before it curves back down. And you could just exaggerate that because she's a little flirtatious. If she's not flirtatious, if she's scared, you're telling a whole different story. Um, so we're improving it little, like little baby steps of improvement, really. Um, just with the storytelling, but these are tiny baby steps. These are not enough to fix the whole scene because it's one of those critiques where, um, I'm, I'm saying like, you need to repaint the whole thing, but keep the idea. Uh, so good movies to look at where we have characters that are hiding. I'm, I'm not sure if there was that kind of same pursuit in that How to Train Your Dragon movie when the black dragon, black toothless meets white toothless. Um, I don't know if, uh, I don't know what other movie where we have something like this. Maybe, you know, just, just look at, no, maybe Sleeping Beauty with the trees in the, in the scene, but I'm not sure really how to direct you to finding a good reference where this is happening in a movie. Um, she, you just have so much character power happening but you have a big tree as well. So you have to create a gesture and a thumbnail for the tree and a gesture and a thumbnail for the character in her position. And then you completely cut off her silhouette, um, which is not good. So what, where I would start actually, if I was working on this as a deer in the forest, I would look at really, really um, some good references for just a deer and then I'd add the body on top. Um, so if we could find a deer kind of hiding behind a tree, 
this one is fine. This one is cool. She's kind of approaching the photographer. Um, this one is cool. And then you could put another tree in front of her. And then that explains why all of this is hidden because it's a very, very uh, full forest. And then, oh, this one is great. That's beautiful. We get to see, oh man, this is what the reference that I would use. And then obviously I'd replace, 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 replace the head with the body of the character. Um, and then I get a nice horse-like reference for the body. I can adjust it for that. If it's I think it's supposed to be a deer. Um, and then I could just put a couple trees in the foreground using this reference. And this would be per like she's just caught, you know, and then you can, if you want to, if it's supposed to be a, you know, she's caught, she was just caught. Um, you know, that was their first meeting, but this doesn't seem like it was their first meeting. It seems like it was their, you know, uh, so maybe you could do something along the lines of a combination. So she was, she's surprised, but she's also kind of shy and hiding away. So you can just take this exact pose. Rebuild it even if, if you don't have portrait studio you could just try to take a picture of you kind of, you know Making that pose if you have portrait studio even better and then um, Go from there and then when it comes to the weather and then the environment really just just look at references if you guys have ever watched my video How to why, why you're drawing suck? Um, I was gonna say if you ever watched my video how to train your dragon. <laughs> I wish those were my videos. I wish I was giving you guys tutorials on how to train and tame a dragon. That would be so fucking cool. Um, but if you've ever watched how you're, Why Your Drawings Suck, um, uh, you see that I talk a lot, a lot about not using references. A lot of artists say, why do I suck? And then it's because you don't use reference. Like your brain, you're just depending on what your brain has managed to suck up. In the, in the five years you thought about being an artist, like in the five years you've dabbled casually in art and you wonder why you're drawing a suck um you haven't enriched your brain with information from 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 everything that you've ever endeavored on so how many forests have you tried to paint how many mountains have you imagined um and and how many concepts and, and subjects have you thought about you could have looked at a reference for all of those and you'd be that much better right now because you've had you you'd have enriched your visual library you saturated it with actual pictures of the actual thing you're trying to draw, you know, it kind of seems like a very logical train of thought. Um, so if there's a subject in your mind you want, look at the reference for it, fill your brain up with it, you're only going to get more points, so you're not going to, your, your painting isn't going to suck more, just because you looked at a reference. Um, but, uh, but yeah, a lot of talk on silhouettes today and how to save paintings that don't seem like they're saveable. Uh, some are saveable, some need a complete restart. Um, one thing you can do to save this one, if you had to keep it, I would say, um, just because it could even be passed as a panel for, for a comic, is, um, let me see if I can, is to just give the scene some really, really strong, and this, the thing is, that's bad, because at this moment, I'm giving you guys scapegoats for getting out of thumbnailing and saving bad paintings um, but you could just make it glow a little bit and then uh, bring in that blue so it's kind of like a memory even then it's just it's just cheesy it's not really helping and, and the snow is just there as an add-on and then I would mess with the levels a little oops Oh, wrong color. I mean, wrong layer. All right, so strengthen that silhouette. So that's what I mean by if you had to save it, you know, and then bring in that uh, subsurface scattering at the top. You can keep the snow. The snow's not harming anything. It's it's still working. I'm not trying to interrupt the silhouette though. And then to make her more mysterious, uh, and this is like the usual critique that I give you guys. This is the basic, you know, as the rack changes. But yeah, I would absolutely repaint the whole thing just because it's a nice concept. And then you have so much information online. Like when I was young, there wasn't Google like this. There, there wasn't. You, I didn't even have a computer. And you guys have all this, this, the sea of information available to you um, for for picking up references and learning how to 
use them in, 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 in classes, literal classes available online um, on how to use them and when to use them and you guys aren't taking advantage of it. You really don't have excuses, you know? Um, so just adding her to that silhouette and then maybe just expanding on that glow. And I would say this is the best way to save this particular shot. So before it was very dull, nothing really happening. And after there's something happening, we pushed her into the background and she's kind of hidden. Her hand is glowing, my bad. Any questions at all before I get out of here? And I'm not entirely sure if I want to keep that rant I had earlier. I might edit it out if I have the time, if Kyle has some time <laughs> to edit it out for me. Uh, I don't know if I'll keep it because, again, I don't want to talk about this anymore because I just want to, um, I, I just want to, I'm just going to delete any comments that come my way in that respect and I'll just let the comment section take care of it. But, uh, but uh, for any of those who are watching at the moment, I just want to, I just need to rant that out. Um, so you have to get that out because that was pissing me off. <clears throat> um, are you suggesting that I take responsibility for myself? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Kyle. Um, how many thumbnails are a minimum for illustration composition? As many as you need. Um, if It just depends on the idea. Some concepts and narrative plot points can only have so many angles that work great. Like when you have an angry character that's powering up, one of those angles that you can't, you know, you don't have a lot of variety with with thumbnailing is just a close-up of an angry face. Um, uh, a character who's domineering, who's taken over a scene, who is intro, enter, big guy, you have to do a low angle. So you know your limitations and then from there you experiment after those limitations. And the way you know what to do when a, when a strong man enters a scene uh, or when a character is powering up is just by watching movies and anime and, and, and taking notes down and by watching... Um, you know, all kinds of stuff, just so that you can understand what's working and what's not. And um, uh, it, 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 I can't, you know, I, maybe I can teach a class on the rules of film. I'm not a film expert at all, but I, I took a lot of classes for it. And I watch a lot of those um, documentaries on what, what, what other movies have done and why they work. So maybe I could do a class on the basic frames and how best to frame them some there are rule breakers out there of course and that creates style for different filmmakers but um who knows all kinds of rules have been broken in the past uh that would be a really really cool class yeah um i do eight or ten thumbnails that's good yeah anything less than ten is a nice amount of a variety for you to pick from not doing thumbnails, you're just basically saying, I'm going in, I'm going, I'm so talented, I'm jumping right in here, I'm painting the very first thing that comes to my mind. A very first brushstroke I lay down will be what will be part of the published final. That's just crazy thinking, you know, like who's written a book that has not been edited? That's crazy. Um, and unless you're like a highly gifted genius, you, and you, but if you were, you would have made the right choice, which is, you know, at that point, it, the point is moot. Um, you need to make plans you need to plan your scenes um, and you need to build references so just like I did uh, with the other piece that I critiqued today it's all about just seeing how much uh, how many options you have um, and, uh, and going from there so thank you everyone for watching today um, and next class Thursday the 5th at 5 p.m. Thursday the 17th <laughs> there I go again with the numbers what the hell Thursday the 17th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time <laughs> um, uh, will be the final class of the year. It'll be the day I critique all of the pieces posted on the Reddit community. So go to istabrak.com and click on the Reddit icon um, and scroll down um, and join, please. And then the, uh, of course, the... Oh, there you go. You... <laughs> Um, you, uh, I don't know where they are. I don't, I don't know if people are done with theirs. Um, but, uh, you can see, I think they'll still start coming in. The crystalline creatures. Oh, I can't wait to see the mammoth. That is so cool. Um, but, uh, basically there were creatures made out of ice and it could have been any creature you wanted. It could have had any magical element. Um, and that is the challenge for this month. Uh, I, I don't know where they are. <laughs> 
I don't think people have posted those yet. But yes, anything that you see me critique comes out of the Reddit wall. And uh, there's there's one. And um, there was another one. A really cool one. Maybe nobody did anything for this one. Maybe people are just tired. Okay. Um, so thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Um, bye, guys.